Uh, good evening, Gloria and Amalia. Can you listen to me? Thank you, Gloria. I have given you the microphone, Gloria, as well to Amalia. You need to give the permission and then you can use it. Gloria, do you have a, a headset? Okay, because I gave you the microphone, but I don't know, you didn't give it the permission. I'm giving it, you, I'm giving it to you again, please. Give the permission so you can use the microphone, Gloria. Okay, thank you. Now you have it. Thank you. Amalia, I'm going to give you... Yes, go, go ahead, please, Gloria. Okay. Yes. Gloria, could you please mute your microphone? Amalia... Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Amalia, are you wearing a headset? Amalia, are you wearing a headset? Okay, I'm going to give you the microphone, so please permit the software to be used. listen to your typing okay oh sorry teacher um yes <laughs> please no speakers they produce a, a very annoying echo do you have a headset headset are the That is something you wear in your head. You said it's headphones and microphone. And as I listen to you, you are using the computer microphone because I listen to uh, some echo in the room. In my I have only my headphones. Okay, you need to buy a headset or buy a microphone. It's because if you use uh, the, the microphone, the computer, as well as the speakers, they produce a really annoying echo and it's really 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 bad to everyone okay in the meantime can you please mute your microphone Maria can you please mute yes. your microphone uh, what, ha what happened with my microphone no could you please mute it because when it is open the echo is gonna is going to be really annoying only when you need the microphone, you unmute it. But now, please mute it. Click on at the top. You, you can see a, a blue microphone. Click on it. Yes. And then it's going to be muted. Thank you. Okay. Okay, guys. Uh, well, I'm glad you're here. Uh, I really like responsible people. I don't know why, but it's a bad thing for me. I, I, I don't like 
I don't hate, I don't like, I don't like irresponsible people, but I really admire responsible people like you two, Gloria and Amalia. Okay, let's start the conference. And, um, well, I'm going to start with the second activity that is a written passage, yes? And especially, specifically, your reactions to the information, yes? I read what you wrote, and, well, I have some questions and some uh, recommendations. In the meantime, uh, for example, look at the, at the end of this slide. I have heard teachers, now you, saying this. Hi, Eric, welcome. A teacher, a female teacher told me once, but we don't have internet in the classroom. Another one at Centro Emas said, teacher, I don't have a computer in the classroom. And one from this BA in ELT told me, there's no internet in the school where I work. What am I telling you? Why? Because of this. Uh, I liked the video, one of the two videos Fernando uploaded. The one that is called Teaching the Age of Technology. Uh, there are some sentences that I like from this video, but there are there is one that I don't like. For example, the first one, I like it. They consume too much media, our students. And I guess he's talking about students in his uh, school, but I guess this applies apply to this applies to to many schools in, in, in Mexico, especially in Sinaloa. But there is one, I guess it is in the middle of, almost in the middle of the video, one sentence that he said, that it says that to walk into a classroom that doesn't have any of that media must be walk, like walking into the desert. This is related to the third question, to the third statement. There is no internet in the school where I work. So, uh, I'm going to ask you some questions, and I want you to use the microphone. The first one, should technology be encapsulated in the four walls of a classroom? Why or why not? Eric, I'm going to give you the microphone, so please give it the permissions, and you can use it whenever you want it. Gloria, you can use the microphone. Amalia, you can use the microphone to answer this question. Uh, I'm sorry, but we couldn't understand. I don't know, something's wrong with the microphone. Eric, are you wearing a headset? Eric, are you wearing a headset? I'm sorry. It wasn't only me, it was Amalia also. And I guess Eric is not at the computer. Uh, your voice was kind of a really, really far and like interrupting too, too often. We could only understood, we could only understand a few words. Eric, but you need to give the permission to the microphone. I'm going to give you. Again, please. Please. 
Gloria, how many windows or how many tabs or how many browsers do you have open? Three. Okay, one should be for the wizq.com. The other one should be for this conference. What is the third one about? Eric, only one. Excellent. That's great. Eric, but something's wrong with the with your headset because you're not given the permission to use the microphone. You should have on the screen something like uh, asking you for the permission to use the microphone. What browser are you using, Eric? Okay, thank you, Gloria. Thank you. You can try to use the microphone now, Gloria, and see if it works better. Now, can you listen to me? Yes. Okay. Uh, I was saying that the technology is not going to be in the classroom. It's important to continue working with the knowledge. I'm always yelling, so uh, key, when we're working with kids, they, they should use they should use a technology even at home too, or if they don't have a, a computer at home, they can go to a cyber cafe and continue working with it. So they must know they must know how to use the website, the uh, the correct website. That's why. Uh, I was I was saying or I was writing in, in, in my post that the kids need to know because we have advantages or disadvantages in the classroom or using technology. We must um, uh, show to our kids which one are the correct sites or the correct websites to visit so they can be informed. Okay, thank you. That was a lot better. Thank you, Gloria. And I, I agree with you. Amalia, what about you? What's your opinion of this? Uh, what's your answer for this question? Can you hear me? Ah, okay. Oh, well, I think that technology uh, shouldn't be encapsulated in the classroom because we live in a technology world, so we can, uh, our students can learn very, uh, very much outside the world using the technology at home, for example, the computer with internet. Um, these days, students can learn alone. Now, um, so uh, well, I think shouldn't be encapsulated. Okay, thank you. Can you please mute your microphone, Amalia? Okay, I agree with you. Yes, uh, but at the on the same time, at the same time, I do agree with what Gloria said. Sometimes our students are kind of a, how can I say this, uh, not, they do not know exactly where to go and use, oh, go ahead, Eric. Hey, can you guys hear me now? Yes. All right, good. I think I fixed it then. Now I'm using a uh, headset. Okay. Can you please mute the microphone, Eric. When you don't need it, mute it. And then when you want to say something, something, only unmute it, please. Oh. Ah, okay. At the top, there's a blue a blue microphone. Okay, that's right. That's right. Thank you. Uh, and I would like you to give us your, your opinion about your answer to this question, Eric. Do you see the question on, on the screen? Yes, I see it. Uh, well, I think that 
it can be a uh, I mean the growth of technology also means that you know students need to uh, well students should learn how to use this but I think we as teachers need to be you know constantly learning about new methods on how to use it too you know I honestly don't consider myself you know the best when it comes to using technology in the classroom uh, but I think that yeah there must be ways you know to include technology in these type of environments where maybe there isn't so much uh, available you know but honestly I don't know too many ways besides the ones that uh, my my classmates commented you know on trying to get the students involved in, in uh, doing their own research at home or or going to a place where they do have internet access I, I honestly uh, don't know too many more Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have another question. Yes, it is related to the same. This is a really, really, really serious question. Who wants to answer first? Hello? Any answer to the second question? Anyway, yes. go ahead, Gloria. I, I think both. We should use technology with both. Uh, um, sometimes students uh, teach us uh, information using internet that we don't know. But that's why we, we need to be informed. And and I think both. We, we have to use it. If I'm using technology as teacher, so my students, um, I, I'm going to teach them, or maybe they are they are already they already know how to use the technology right but uh, when, when we are going to use it uh, I believe or I think that they are going to be able to to use the information together with me they are, they are working with me so we must know must know how to use technology thank you Amalia Eric Well, I, I agree, you know, I think both both need to use it because, you know, it's important for teachers to be aware, you know, of all the tools that they have available and, and how they can use them to enrich their classes. And it's a great way to get the students involved. I mean, students use technology already, you know. It's just the fact of, you know, getting them to use it for an educational purpose. But I mean, they're they're using technology already, you know, in everything and anything they can. Thank you, Eric. Amalia. I agree with Eric too. I think um, teacher and students they have to use the technology. For example, in my case, I use the technology to teach and learn. For example, uh, with my students. I use the smart board with fifth and sixth grade and they learn very much with this technology because um, it's motivated for the student. Okay, thank you. Uh, I guess you work in a private school, Amalia, do you? I mean, uh, for example, I, I read what you wrote, yes, and I noticed that some of you work in private schools and other ones work at, in public schools. As I told you, uh, welcome, Fernando. As I told you last week, the SEP system use uh, what they call HDT, it's in Spanish, Habilidades Digitales para Todos. And in the private schools, they use System 1, that is a very special software and activities to use with the iPad. I guess a few, a very few private schools are using still uh, what they call or used to call AppCo or something like that. But anyway, uh, it called my attention 
that AMCO, thank you, Eric, AMCO. So you use AMCO. It is, uh, I guess, uh, about the same as uh, System 1, System 1, is it? Who is using System 1? Thank you, Eric. Okay. Okay, Amalia, but you said that you use, uh, well, it's a public school, but you can use a projector and Excellent, that's great. Okay, let's go to the next uh, question. I'm asking you these questions is because I want you to, in a way, uh, close this uh, reading passage with uh, the answer to these questions. So, I'm going to give that microphone to Fernando. But in the meantime, you can answer this third question, Gloria, Amalia, and Eric. Hello? Hello? Go ahead, please. Hello? Can you hear me? <clears throat> yeah, a little bit loud. Sorry. <laughs> okay, Fernando, what's uh, what was the question, sorry? Uh, it's the third question on the screen. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay, what's your answer? Uh, well, I know that uh, a student-centered class is um, a class where uh, all the activities, all the, the uh, the, the lesson plan and so and so uh, of the teacher is based on the student um, construction of the knowledge, and it is not about teachers' talk time. It is not about um, entertaining of the teacher. It's it's about um, the students uh, producing the language that has been um, learned, and also uh, building uh, new structures from what they do. That's that's. So, um, that's what I think is a, uh, a student-centered class. Thank you. Anyone else? Fernando, can you please mute your microphone? Uh, thank you. Gloria, Amalia, Eric? Gloria, Amalia? Remember, you can use the go ahead, Gloria. Thank you. You please speak a little bit louder. The student center class isn't it uh, the, the student? It doesn't depend only on the teacher. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah you're right. Uh huh. Okay, so uh, I believe here that students are going to decide what they want to learn and what they want to do uh, at the time they're working in in the classroom. And they are going to encourage uh, to participate in the learning process all the time. Uh-huh. Well, okay, it should be traditional. Yes, mm, but anyone else? I would add something else. I agree with you, Gloria, but... I mean, you're, you're describing what, what it is called a very, really autonomous student. But that exactly is not exactly a student center class. For example, um, what you do in this online environment is you are autonomous students. You don't need anyone to tell you to do this, do that at this time, etc. You have the choice to, uh, you have 24 hours to answer or do the assignments. It's not like in a traditional classroom. In a traditional classroom, it is usually a class that is uh, dominated by the teacher. I mean, it's a kind of a lecture class. Teachers uh, used to be the star of the movie, but a student center class should be the student who is the star of the movie. Doing, yes. I, I wrote TTT versus SCT, and the question is, do you know what uh, TTT, teacher talking time is? 
what I was telling you is when we spend too much time telling students what to do, telling students doing this, telling students doing that, describing the class, etc., etc., et but not giving time to students to work, I mean, to really use the language. Yes? Uh, uh, students in the class should be a student talking time class. Uh, if you go, for example, to any class, yours, mine, his, hers, etc., you will find that usually in a in a standard class, I'm talking about a 60 minute minute class, teachers spend about 50 minutes speaking or talking, and students at least uh, the most participative students spend between 10 or 15 or sometimes five minutes talking. Am I wrong? Use a microphone. Well, uh, I hadn't thought about this too much like this, but I guess that, yeah, I honestly try to give my students as much time to talk and use the language as possible, you know, and I think that language teaching is, is really good for that, you know, you can use any type of of discussion or activity for as an excuse for students to talk, but um, yeah, I guess probably it is more teacher talking than students talking. Thank you, Eric. Amalia, Gloria, Fernando. Sometimes uh, our classes, our lessons are really, really, uh, how can I say, governed by administrators. We have to teach a textbook, we have to do this, etc., etc., and sometimes we don't have time to for students to practice, to do, um, to create something new, for example, to solve problems, to give, the, 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 give them a, a chance to use the creativity, uh, to investigate, I don't know, many, many things that... Have you ever heard about Bloom? Bloom's taxonomy? Fernando, will you please tell us about it? Uh huh, yes, with Michael. <coughs> Can you hear me? Mm hmm. Uh, well, um, Bloom's taxonomy is uh, like a chart. Where when you have want to uh, build a, uh, an investigation and, and set the goals of of that investigation, the aims of that investigation, um, it offers you words like like dig, like investigate, like explain, like uh, analyze, just to 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 develop the topic. So the the the, the problem of investigation. So we can we can clarify every aspect or type of of, of its of its nature in in, a, in some kind of a a project. That's what I understand by a Bloom's taxonomy. Okay. Yes, you're right. Uh, anyone else? I'm gonna give you a website, not exactly a URL for the the chart that Fernando told us about. It is a pyramid, pyramid. If you see at the bottom of the pyramid, we have uh, what we should spend more time on. Even students' activities, exercises to remember. And then as far as, uh, as you go up, the pyramid is getting, uh, how can I say, narrower. Yes, they should do exercises to understand. They should do exercises to apply what they learned. And then they should analyze what they learned, what the teacher taught, then evaluate to finally create. That is the top of the, the pyramid. Yes. And sometimes, uh, because we do not know, we spend too much time uh, at, the, at the 
I mean, at the beginning of the, the pyramid, spend too much time on giving students exercises for remembering, not exactly giving students a chance to go up in the, in the ladder, into the pyramid. But anyway, why is this related to technology? This is related to the question, these questions are related to what we read this week. Uh, we shouldn't encapsulate technology in the classroom. Yes, it should be, we should say technology in education, not technology in the classroom. Why? Because sometimes, as you mentioned in the in, the, in your posts, uh, sometimes we do not we do not have the money to have all the technology, the latest technology, or sometimes administrators do not have the vision to see, uh, to realize exactly the help uh, we might have in learning and, and as well as in teaching by using technology. But uh, it is difficult to change administrators, and as you said, it is difficult to encourage students, teachers, 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 not students, to use technology. Uh, some of them are kind of a, not exactly, they do not fear technology. They fear what their students know, because usually our students, you, young people, know too much, a lot, than teachers. Should be all the way around, but now it's different. Okay, let's continue. Uh, I'm, I'm taking this uh, phrase from these two guys that it says that Sobo was originally developed for other purposes, but it's used in education. You can go to that website that is at the, at the bottom of the slide. You can uh, see all the principles, the same principles for using technology. Yes, it's uh, a really, really interesting article. It's too much information, but you can, if you have time, you can uh, see once and see what you can get from them. And then I also want you to tell, tell you this. For example, some teachers said, it's because I don't have technology in the classroom. I'm sorry, I disagree because most of our students have, have cell phones, yes or no. They use it for different purposes, yes, for personal purposes, texting, especially texting. Or sometimes, I don't know, uh, taking photographs of the teacher or the students and upload the pictures. I mean, they're not using the, you're not using technology correctly. But we can change this. This is just an example. I use it sometimes. And it doesn't matter on the level of the students. It doesn't matter on the age of the students. But do you have any other ideas how to share or how to, I mean, how to use technology in the classroom? Talking about uh, cell phones, projectors, computers, iPads, etc. I once had a student in the class using a P, uh, PSP, a PlayStation, a portable PlayStation. I was telling them about a, a website where they could find a lot of good examples. It was a grammar class, and I was telling them about a website where they could find a lot of a lot of examples. And I noticed that the student was, uh, I thought he was playing with uh, the PSP. And I said, hey, please, don't play in class. Teacher not playing. I'm checking the website. Okay. And then he showed the website, of course, it's not the same to have a, a laptop, a computer, than a PSP or a cell phone, but he was confirming what I said, and then students were more interested in what they saw in the PSP and not in what, in what, what I was saying. Do you get my point? We have technology in the classroom, but sometimes mm, we have too much to do with the lessons, we have to cover the program, and we forget to do some research and find out that Yes, we have a lot of technology in classrooms, but sometimes we don't know how to use it. We don't know what could we do, et cetera, et cetera. But anyway, this is my opinion. Any questions, opinions so far? To me, mm -hmm. uh, well, my students, they have cell phones. That's it, the, the, the school I'm working, the, 
social structure is, is too low. So, the, yes, of course, they have cell phones, but internet is not available for everyone. In my schools, in the schools I'm working, internet is, is only available for the computer classroom, not even for the teachers, just for computer classroom. That's the problem that, uh, that I'm, I have with uh, every class I'm working. I try to use my own videos. I, I download videos uh, <coughs> before classes, so I I, um, I copy them. Then I I show the, the videos to the kids. I use uh, the tape recorder, but the problem with the the good technology, the good things of technology, is uh, when I try to use internet, I cannot use it because it's not available for us, just for computers class. Is it an elementary school, Gloria? Middle school, high school? Elementary school. Public elementary school, yes? Okay. Yeah, that happens. Uh, let me show you. This is the website I promised to give you last week where you can find some activities even if you're not a public school but about the HTT program you can find activities and you're going to see that you can create more interesting, more motivating and more encouraging activities than the ones you can find at HTT at the HTT website but anyway, let's continue if you have no questions there's a good book you can find it at Amazon at $18 plus the shipping. That's going to be about $30. It's uh, maybe too much uh, money. But you can go to the website. This website uh, at, the, at the bottom of that. I'm going to. This website, you can find the, the book exactly the way it is uh, in the printed form, in the print. Yes, and I like this part in, the ch in Chapter 9 that it says that we are to adequately prepare students for an era of change. And I guess students already know this, yes? Uh, but it says, uh, we are to adequately prepare students for an era of change. The question is, are we really prepared to prepare our students? You mentioned that, I guess it was Gloria. What about when we have zero technology? Sometimes, as you are uh, autonomous learners. Sometimes we go and find it out by ourselves. But what about those teachers who are not prepared? How can they prepare students for the 21st century? Yes, Fernando, I agree with you. Anyway, this is a good book. I recommend you go and, and, and read it. I bought it a few years ago. And actually, I have used it a lot. There is a chapter, I'm just looking at the book. I like really uh, chapter two. If you go and download it, it's, I don't know, maybe about 10 megabytes. It's not too too big. You can see that all the chapters are interesting. Yes, for example, I like really like number two. Is it H or IT? IT stands for information technology. Okay, that's great, Fernando. But anyway, Let's continue with this. We can use technology in the classroom, and sometimes we ha we don't have to spend money. Most of the times it's free. Okay. There's a second part in the reading passage about hot potatoes, and I have a question. Maybe you're going to find this first question a little bit aggressive. I'm sorry. It is not aggressive, but do you have any questions? I mean, any answer for the first one? And what about the second one? I'm waiting for your answers. You can use the microphone. Eric, you can use the microphone. Uh, about did I read it or, or download it? 
uh, I honestly didn't download it. I just read it. I plan to download it uh, later, but I haven't done it yet. But I know I will. Uh, but I honestly, right now, I haven't done it. Thank you. Anyone else? Here's an, uh, another another uh, sheet that is in. It doesn't have to be anything with hot potatoes. I don't know. Maybe it was a, a, a problem with the internet or not. Uh, we lost you, Gloria. Thank you, Fernando, for the link. Okay. What is spoon fed? Ooh, you can download hot potatoes. Fernando, Amalia, could you? Fernando? Okay. You couldn't or you didn't give it a chance. You chose it and downloaded it. Hmm, okay. Let me come. I recommend using Mozilla Firefox. It's a lot better. Chrome is really fast, but it's not it's not a very good one. Okay. The second question. It says, are you spoon fed student or are you still a spoon fed student? What is spoon fed student? Any ideas? If you look at the picture, you have the answer. Go ahead, please. Eric? Uh, well, I think it's, it refers to somebody who learns only what you are taught, you know, like what the teachers are giving you. That's the spoon that's feeding you, and that's the only thing you learn, and you don't go out and look for your own information. Yes, Eric, you're completely right. I don't know, sometimes the system, the establishment, the schools, teachers, administrators, make students to be dependent on what the teacher says and that makes us spoon-fed students. We only eat in a way or literally we only eat what the teacher tells us. Uh, I mean we don't go and try to not exactly destroy the teacher but have you have you watched the movie uh, I can't remember the name of the movie but it's something about the the Dead Poet Society, something like that. Okay, if you watch the movie, uh, what the guy in the movie, the character is doing, is not exactly jeopardizing what the teacher is, Robin Williams, not exactly jeopardizing what the teachers, uh, what the teacher do, does or, or says, but only that guys do not trust exactly what the teacher tells you. I know you are teachers, I'm a teacher, but we need to, to, to find out a little bit more, not depend on the teacher. Why? Because many times we are wrong. Yes? Yep, that's right, Fernando. Anyway, uh, I would like you to stop being a spoon-fed student and do something on your, on your own. I mean, uh, eight weeks in this course is not too much to learn uh, about how to use technology, what tools to use, etc. Honestly, you can you can trust me. You can go and find out about what they call Web 2.0 tools, and then you're gonna find hundreds, hundreds of, st of tools, and mostly for free to download or to use in the cloud. And honestly, eight weeks is not enough to know or to learn how to use them uh, in the classroom. And not exactly in the, in the, in the classroom. Because as I said, you can have uh, different strategies 
for using that. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a little pause here, and I'm gonna tell you that I changed. I made an, uh, a change in the in the program. I, I had for week four, I had the blog, how to use the blog, etc. etc. I'm gonna change it for the next week, but I'll tell you about later. Yes, but let me continue with the slides. You can go to this website, yes, and you can find a lot of exercises and you're gonna see that there are some good exercises, there are some kind of uh, social exercises, there are bad exercises, there are horrible exercises, etc., etc. But at least if you if you want to stop being a spoon fed, so you can go and check these websites. I can send you this uh, presentation so you can go and, and I mean, click on the links and go immediately to the websites and see and compare and find out what you can do. Actually, for me, there is one library that is completely for free and really uh, amazing what you can find out there. This is the library I am, I'm talking about. You can find a lot of video tutorials at YouTube. Honestly, you can find... Okay, I like that one, Fernando. But anyway, if you want to learn how to use hot potatoes, we could spend about eight weeks and we will still miss some really good activities, yes? Uh, I'm going to give you the last, the last link I'm copying and I'll paste it now and please take one or two minutes and go to that website and check what they have in that website. You go into the website, actually it is a web page, and then you scroll down, you see that you have some blanks, yes, and almost in the middle you find a video. Take your time please and watch the video and then we will continue in this conference. Only two minutes, okay? Please. Are you done? Any opinions? You can stop the video. And please use the microphone, Fernando, Eric, Amalia, Gloria. Well, I believe this is kind of a, kind of a... Uh, you think call? Oh. Let's go to speak first. Continue, please. Gloria. Okay. Okay. It's an amazing exercise. Listening to the music and completing at the same time the the activity. Uh, listening how how to say or how to pronounce it, the colors, and then how to write them. It's a, it's a fantastic activity. I really love it. Thank you, teacher.
Thank you, Eric. Thank you for being a gentleman and letting Gloria speak first. Go ahead, please, Eric. You want to say something? Well, I think it's it's a great activity. I think that learning through music can be great. And uh, actually, right now, I'm working on my own project uh, that's about teaching grammar with music to my students because right now we're using the AMCO system. It's new in my school, so you know, for my students, sometimes the grammar is a little bit difficult for them to to get some of the grammar rules in this. So I'm starting to do something kind of similar, but with a different type of music so that, you know, because I think if I played this for my middle school students, they would probably think it's kind of too mellow, you know, but I think it's great, though. I, I think it's a, it's a really good thing to do, and uh, maybe when I finish my project, I'll show it to you guys, and you can tell me what you think about it. Thank you, Eric. Yes. Go ahead, Fernando. Uh, well, I have a thought about this. Um, for example, this web page and the activity was cool. But I was thinking about what Gloria said before, and she's right. Um, sometimes we face the problem of, about the internet, uh, the, the stuff that it should be there but it's not there, so we can use, make use of it. But um, I was, I was, uh, I faced that situation about two years ago, and um, <clears throat> I found like, uh, like a, one friend of mine. He was like a genius in computers, and told me that if you want to play that music from that video. That specific video, for example, you can use this um, program to download the video or download the, the MP3, and then you can use it in your classroom without internet. And uh, you, if you, if they're OHP, will use it. Or if you can print the activity, you can use it. I mean, it's um this this kind of a, a new things like using this kind of programs. They're really cool. Yeah, but um, sometimes we face these this kind of problems. Now, the thing here is how to, to solve those problems to just to, to execute the activities and, and be successful in, in, in doing it. I mean, but sometimes most of us don't have these uh, advantages that makes us um, come, come, out, come up from, from these problems, you know? So maybe... Um, it's this using this technology in the right way. It, we can save time. We can we can um, we can save our classes in 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 a, in, in a very um, positive way. I don't know. That's, that's what I was thinking about. Thank you, Fernando. Okay, going back a little bit about what Eric said. Amco is uh, as far as I know. Am Amco uses a lot of exercises that you can do with hot potatoes. And combining what Fernando said, Eric, you can use it offline or online. Uh, of course, to upload uh, the exercises designed with hot potatoes, we need to do something. But I can tell you, and I can help you. And I really, I'm really, I really like the idea of you finding, I mean, uh, finishing your project and tell it, telling us to, to give you feedback. That would be great. It's great for every one of us. Uh, okay. So, I'm going to give you a website where you can watch an activity, I don't know, maybe it's about three minutes. You can watch it, uh, give you three minutes, but uh, it's not exactly designed with PowerPoint. I mean, ha sorry, with hot potatoes, I was typing. Uh, this is the website. You can find a lot of activities in that website, eslvideo.com. Please look at the activity. And then we'll continue with this conference.
Okay, I guess everybody is done. Are you? As I said, that exhibit is not designed with hot potatoes, but you can use, uh, if you download hot potatoes, you're going to find out that it is uh, made of six different uh, tools, or it is a suite. Yes, there's one that is one that there's one that is called jQuiz. jQuiz allows you to do a lot of multiple choice questions exercises. And actually, I'm gonna give you this optional activity activity for you. If you decide to do it, you can send it to me to my email address. Uh, as I said, that it says it's an optional exercise. You can go to the website. Then you can design an exercise using hot potatoes, especially jQuiz. Yes, for example, the other one with the colors was uh, jClose. And if you do this activity, you can send it to me. Yes, it's an optional activity. Whatever question you have about using or designing them with hot potatoes, I'll, I'll be available to send me an email or leave me a message at the, on my phone. Okay, guys, let's continue with this. Let's go to the second part because we have about 12, mi 12 minutes to finish this conference. What can you tell me about Educa Play? The advantages, disadvantages. Do you like it? Why do you like it? You didn't like it? Why you didn't? Etc. I tried to do all the exercises and I couldn't do two exercises. I won't say whose exercises were there. No, it's because they were kind of incomplete. The second one is not found. Uh, what do you mean? And the video on YouTube? I gave you the link because you can find, you can find the, the video and download it. When you want to download a video, you can use different kind of applications, software applications, but I recommend you go to uh, this website. This is great. I'll type it. To download videos, I prefer this one. It works really well. And I don't know why. So, Fernando, please tell us about the advantages. You said advantages. Or Eric, or Gloria, or Amalia. Oh, well, uh, uh, about the advantages of using um, Educa Play, <clears throat> I can say that um, it is a useful tool, um, but for me, I can say that, that I could use the tool uh, uh, planning the tool, planning the, the activities, right? Uh, and once I plan this activity, say if I have a uh, kind of an internet in the class or so, I can use it to save, as I said in, the, in, in my post, and we can save time. We can save valuable time and to, to give a, a, a really, uh, in Spanish they say, um, aprendizaje significativo, that's what they say. So maybe this this kind of a, the, uh, pages, these kind of tools help us to to enhance those th that kind of learning and the students the students talk time and it's meaningful learning. Yes, yeah. thank you so much. And then um, that that those are uh, can be the advantages because it's very interactive, it's very visual, and most of all if we're working with with, with, with beginners or elementary levels, it is a, it is a great tool. It is a great tool that the students react very well with it. And actually, I used. Thank you so much, Eric. I used one of your one of your activities in my class, and they liked it a lot. Nobody was looking our way. They were so involved in the activity, and they really liked it. And really liked it. It's, 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 it's a cool tool. Thank you, Fernando, Eric, Amalia, Gloria. I thought it was really good. I even showed it to my co-worker. Oh. Huh. Ladies first. 
Thank you. Ah, okay. <laughs> I found this activity very useful, attractive, and if I want to do a, a puzzle activity, I can do it very fast. So I like very much this web. Thank you, Eric. I found it very useful. I showed it to some of my coworkers and they liked it a lot and they said they were gonna start using it. And I actually plan to start giving my students a little bit of homework through through this page too. So, you know, for in two weeks, I already have it in, in my uh, lesson plan and I already turned it in. They're going to do a homework assignment that is right there. I think that one of the great advantages is that you can design based on what you're doing in class and the level of English of your students. You know, that it's something that you can do exactly for them you know so I think that's that's something that can be really good and uh, I think the students are going to enjoy it you know I, I can't wait for my students to start using it and uh, start getting something new you know I know they're going to like it Gloria uh, is totally useful and uh, I, I found only a disadvantage only just one disadvantage that it, it is that you can only use the activities just once or, or, or twice you don't have enough uh, time to use it but on the other hand uh, it's very interactive uh, uh, we can use images we can use songs vocabulary, grammar, etc. so we can acquire the knowledge from the students. So I, I believe it's a very, very useful uh, website. Thank you, Gloria. I really like uh, the exercises we can design at Educa Play. I don't know why they changed their, their, their policy because in, the, in, the, in a, few, a few months ago, you could download the activities and you can use the activities offline, but suddenly, it's not possible. You can download the activities, but you cannot show it. You need to be connected to, to the internet to show the activities. And also, uh, if you notice, if you notice, for example, if you do the, the activity and then something goes, goes uh, wrong, you can, you can go uh, and update the page uh, by pressing F5 or actualizar, and then you can see you can see that uh, the program shows you shows you the answers. That is a disadvantage for me. Okay, guys, uh, are you talking about the hot potatoes, Fernando? At intercambios virtuales, it should be org, not com. But okay, anyway, so. Okay. What's the name of the program? The application. Okay, let's continue with this. There are advantages and disadvantages, but I can I guess as you mentioned and you agree with me that we have more advantages than disadvantages. And I really like what, uh, what uh, Fernando is doing. I mean, uh, borrowing activities from you and using them in, with your students and your lessons, as well as I really like what uh, Eric is doing, spreading the word, telling coworkers, telling people how to use this or websites or tools, that's great. Okay, yes, right, Fernando. Okay, let me continue with this because we are almost out of time. It's a, a really, really honest question. Don't take it as aggressive. And please give me your really, really, your very honest answer. Yeah? Can you hear me? Uh-huh. Well, I definitely will use Wikipedia, but also I'm going to use Rocky. <laughs> 
Um, actually, I, I, I used uh, Boki as an assignment for my students last week, and I liked it a lot because I had this um, um, second midterm exam, and the um, and the oral exam was Boki. Actually, they had to uh, describe a, a, a famous profile person, and and they described it in, in Boki, and then I and I uh, I used it as a it's an oral exam, and, and when they, uh, we had the meeting, the class meeting, I, I put this in, in personally, student by student, and, and then I, I said, told him, you have to, you should, you, it doesn't say he is he, and it is not he are, it's he is, and so on and so on. So I definitely want to use the Educa Play a lot, and, and Bulky, and, and also the, the other web pages that you give us at the, be <laughs> at the beginning, because they're, they're, they're actually a great, great tool that, that we can use in the classroom. Thank you, Fernando. Amalia, Gloria, Eric. Uh, well, uh, right now we were talking about being a spoon-fed student. I tried to not be a spoon-feeding teacher, you know, so I tried to do this kind of stuff, you know, using other types of resources and, you know, trying to do this as as dynamic, as interactive as possible. And I really liked the activities and the possibilities that you have with this website. So I will definitely continue using it. Thank you, Rick. Amalia, Gloria. It is very illustrative for me and for, uh, I think, uh, one in, in life I'm going to use this in the classroom with my students, I will use it. I'll be sure for that. Thank you. Amalia. So I found it, as I say, very useful and attractive for my students and for me too. Will you continue using it? Okay. Okay, guys, we're almost done. Next week, I'm going to tell you about Blogger, but in the meantime, you can go and find out, and if possible, mm, get an account. It is free. Blogger. Yes? You can use different uh, websites that offer free accounts to have your blogs. I recommend Blogger or Blogspot because uh, this website allows us to do many things that the other ones uh, do not offer. You can use WordPress or you can find different websites, but as I said, this one is the best one. And also, next week, I'm going to tell you about how to design a narrated PowerPoint presentation. If you already said, if you already know about this, it's going to be great. If not, try to find out a little bit about it, how to design a narrated PowerPoint presentation. Once you have that, this narrated presentation, you will have to get an account at slideboom.com. Slideboom.com will allow, allow you to uh, host your activity and also it will give you a code that we will use in the blog. If you have a blog, Fernando, that's great. Excellent. Mm, I prefer Slide Boom. Slide Share changes the fonts, changes the, the audio. Honestly, once you know a Slide Boom, you're gonna start, I mean, stop using Slide Share. But anyway, so that's going to be for next week. Slideboom is really easy and gives you more options. Okay, guys. So if you have any questions, if you don't have any questions, then I'll see you next week.